Now let's discuss RAID 1-0. This is known as mirroring and striping put together. Let's take a look at the image here. You'll see we have four disks or four drives, if you will. And we have one drive here, which is mirrored with RAID 1 to a second drive. So we have one RAID mirror over here, and any data that is written to this drive is also written to this drive. We'll call this the odd RAID mirror because we have A1, A3, A5, A7. On the right-hand side, we have two more drives, and these are also mirrored. We'll call this the even mirror, A2, A4, A6, A8. So if we write data to this array, what's going to happen is chunks will be written in a striping format. The first chunk, A1, is written here, and then the second chunk, A2, is written to this mirror. Third chunk, A3, is here. Fourth chunk is written here. So it's striped in that fashion and continues on like that. These two RAID 1 mirrors are collectively striped with RAID 0. Now, RAID 0 by itself is not fault tolerant. It stripes data, and it does that for speed. But if you lose a drive, you lose the entire array. But in this case, we're using RAID 0 to stripe data among multiple RAID 1 mirrors. So it is fault tolerant. So the combination of these is known as RAID 1 plus 0 or RAID 1 0. If we were to lose this drive here, it's OK, because we have a mirror of that here. If we were to lose this drive here, that's OK, because we have a mirror here. And if we lose a drive, we can continue to function it is fault tolerant because we have that other data available. Of course, we want to rebuild the system as soon as possible. And that's what we would do, most likely with hot swappable drives. So let's show an example of some drives in another server. This is a Dell server, and I'm in the BIOS and the system setup. I'm going to go down to device settings and access that. And you'll see at the top, we have the integrated RAID controller. This is a PERC H730 controller, and it controls all the drives on this server. And in fact, there's eight drives on it. We can also work with the settings for our integrated network interface cards, and we have four of those here. But this is what I want to go to. So we'll go to the RAID controller, press Enter. And then we're going to go to configuration management, and we'll press Enter for that. And then you'll see the option here, convert to RAID capable. So with this system, we can set up RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, I believe RAID 6, and also RAID 1, 0 if we wanted to. We'll press Enter for convert to RAID capable. And you'll see that we can then select the disks that we want. And here are all the eight disks. And I could just press the space bar to select them. And then we can continue on and create the RAID array that we want based on these drives. We could create, say, one RAID 5 array with four drives, and then another RAID 5 array with the other four drives. Or we could do a RAID 1 array with the first two drives, install our operating system to that, and then use the other six drives and set up a RAID 5 or RAID 6 array for our data, or perhaps a RAID 1-0 array. But I'm not going to use any of these, and I'm just going to go to back. And normally I would clear the configuration because I'm not actually even using the RAID option here. Instead, I'm using something known as ZFS. ZFS is a file system that you can work with within Linux that can automatically do software-based RAID in the form of RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 1.0. And in fact, on this system, that's what I'm using, RAID 1.0 ZFS. So we're going to go back out of this and finish and finish out of this and finish out of the menu. We'll say yes to exit, and we're going to boot the system and take a look at what's running here. 
So now we've booted up our server and you can see what's running on here. It's the Proxmox virtual environment. This is working directly at the console of the server, which you can do. And we can connect with our username and password. Right now I'm just using root on this, but you can see here that we're running Proxmox. So we can work directly at the console here as if you're sitting right at the system and that's fine. But when you work with Proxmox, generally what you do is you do most of your work via the browser from your workstation. And it shows you that you can connect in this way. Use HTTPS to the IP address and the port number 8006 to connect to Proxmox. So I've already made that connection and here it is. This is Proxmox and we have lots of virtual machines that are running on here. And for this server, which is called Parallax, by the way, we can also work in the shell directly in here. So this is a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see. And we can run commands like we normally would in Linux because Proxmox is Linux based. And you can see here, it's using the 6.5 kernel. So it's Debian based, but it uses a newer kernel and they make a lot more uh, changes and updates to that Debian system. But we can run commands in here. We could do something like du, and we could see all of the directories that are important. We could run df to see our mounts. We could run duf if it's installed, and we can see all of the mounts from there as well. You're going to see zfs quite often on the list here. So zfs is what I'm using as my file system. Let's go down and actually look at the drives or disks, if you will. And those same eight disks that we saw in the BIOS are listed here as well. And so we have slash dev SDA slash dev SDB and so on. And we have eight drives altogether. These are a bit older drives. They're 300 gigabyte each SAS drives. But you can see as you look through these that each one has a BIOS boot partition has EFI, and it has ZFS as well. So ZFS is the file system that we're using here. It used to be known as Zettabyte file system, but today it's just known as ZFS. And I definitely don't have Zettabytes on this system. It's really just a 1.5 terabyte volume in total. And when I installed Proxmox, I decided to not use RAID on the controller on the server, but instead use RAID with ZFS. And what I built is a RAID 1.0 setup with the eight drives. And so those are all listed here and they all work collectively. If one drive fails, then we would have to replace it. And you always wanna have a couple backup drives available to you. So here's an example of a couple SAS drives. And you can see those here. And these are hot swappable. They're inside of caddies that we can plug right into the server if they fail. So let's go back up to our shell here and you'll see it resets automatically. Now, if we do a uname a, you'll see that we're running this 6.5 PVE, that's Proxmox. And so they have their own kernel there. And if we take a look at the slash ETC directory, you'll see there's going to be all kinds of different Proxmox based stuff in here, but it's essentially designed off of Debian. If we did a cat on slash ETC slash Debian underscore version, we would see it is 12.5, which is the latest point release or minor release as of the recording of this video. So Proxmox is a good system to use for virtualization. It runs on a separate server normally, and that's what we're doing here. We're connecting to that separate Dell server, but it offers a lot of security advantages for your virtualization platform, especially in the networking arena. So something definitely to check out. And it also offers that ZFS option so that you can do software-based RAID and you can do a lot more with your drives and there's a lot of functionality built into that. There is some risk because it's software-based 
and ZFS might not be fully supported by some software out there that you might need to use. And also your organization may have a policy that says, we need to work with RAID within the storage drive controller. If that's the case, you can't really use ZFS, but it's a great tool and I highly recommend you get into it. Let's review the key points for RAID 1 plus 0. First of all, it's a combination of RAID 0 striping and RAID 1 mirroring. So it takes the speed of RAID 0 and the fault tolerance of RAID 1 and combines them together, the best of both worlds. It uses four or more drives, so you need at least four. In our case, we had eight drives, so we have four RAID 1 mirrors that are being striped. The more, the better, and the faster it can work. It creates two mirrors, which are then striped. There's no parity whatsoever, like with RAID 5 or RAID 6, but it is fault tolerant due to mirroring of data. So if we lose a drive, we can hot swap another one back in, and we can keep going the whole time and then rebuild our data when we need to. It's potentially very fast. That's the idea of RAID 1.0. So definitely check that out as well. So that's it for the RAID portion of this lesson. I recommend you do a little bit more studying on RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 1.0, and look at how you can install those on your systems and apply them to Linux.